Hello everyone and welcome to another webinar of our mental health series. These webinars explore various mental health topics with expert comments and tips through the lens of international students and newcomers to Canada. They were developed by the Family and Mental Health Services of COSTI in collaboration with Orientation to Ontario, O2O, and International Student Connect ISC programs to raise awareness and provide support. My name is Nawara and I'm the bilingual coordinator at COSTI's Orientation to Ontario and International Student Connect project. Today's webinar is about coping with loneliness in a new world. After watching this webinar, you will be better informed about the emotional impact of loneliness and also be aware of coping strategies available to you to overcome loneliness. To help us understand this topic better, we have Vince Pietropaolo, who will present the webinar today. Vince Pietropaolo is the General Manager of Costi Family and Mental Health Services. In his current position, he has worked with ethnocultural communities in program design development and implementation in the areas of mental health, domestic violence, and problem, problem gambling. Vince currently sits on the York Region Violence Against Women Coordinating Committee, Ontario Resource Group on Gambling, Ethnicity, and Culture, the North York Specialized Courts Advisory Committee, National Trauma-Informed Care Project National Advisory Committee, Vince is a subject matter expert on the Immigrant and Refugee Mental Health Project. Recently, Vince designed and implemented the Refugee Mental Health Program at COSTI. Vince has presented extensively on the issue of domestic violence, men's violence, and problem gambling at conferences in the United States and Canada. He has guest lectured at York University and Ryerson University. Without further ado, we will now start. Thank you so much, Vince, for being here with us today. Thank you, Nawara. The title of today's webinar is Coping with Loneliness in a New World, an issue that is really, really important to international students. And we're going to look at the agenda now. Today's agenda, we will define and understand what loneliness is. We'll look at the impact of chronic loneliness and how it impacts the mental health as well as your physical health. And then we're going to explore ways to cope with loneliness and also where to seek help and when to seek help. And of course, definitely we'll review and have an opportunity to give you some resources that if you're struggling with loneliness will be very, very helpful. So loneliness and its impact. So let's look at and let's look and see how loneliness impacts the individual. Now, we're going to start, as we said in our agenda, and look at more specifically about what loneliness is and how to define it. Loneliness is, first of all, a universal human emotion that is both complex and unique to each individual. So regardless of culture, regardless of ethnicity, regardless of where uh, someone, male or female, it is a universal emotion and definitely it is expressed differently with each individual. Now, there are two essentially types of loneliness that we experience as individuals. One, of course, is situational loneliness. So an example of situational loneliness is physical isolation. So when we move to a new location, perhaps when we have a symbolic separation like divorce, these are examples of situational loneliness. Initially, for instance, when we go to a new country and we're by ourselves, as we adjust to the environment, um, as we separate from loved ones, we can experience that emotion and really feel in the moment loneliness. As well, if we've been married and connected and attached to a loved one and that marriage dissolves, we can also experience loneliness after the end of any relationship, whether it's a divorce or some kind of separation or even a breakup. Now, most international students will definitely face this kind of temporary no loneliness. It could be at the beginning when they first arrive, or it can be throughout any period of their academic career. Now, chronic loneliness is 
when you feel alone and isolated over a longer stretch or period of time, even though you're surrounded by people. So it's an actual emotion that one is experiencing and feeling. However, it's not necessarily at all times connected to the environment. So it's a feeling that one carries. It's of course characterized by constant unrelenting feelings of being alone, separated or divided from others and an inability to connect on any deeper level. So it's a psychological state that one is experiencing and it can be a very painful and difficult emotion to work through. Now, what makes one vulnerable to loneliness? Of course, international students are vulnerable and may be vulnerable to loneliness just by the fact that they are leaving a place of comfort, perhaps safety, where they are connected to family, friends, and loved ones, and that separation and coming to a place where they perhaps may not know anybody, where they have no attachments or have no friendships or any relationships. So one that in itself makes one vulnerable. Feeling homesick and missing the way things are done back home. That again can prompt feelings of loneliness. And of course, when one experiences culture shock, that adjustment process, coming to a new place, experiencing the architecture, adjusting to the weather, and everything looking so unfamiliar, one can experience that disconnect and almost derealization, what is often referred to as culture shock. Belonging to a minority group um, and living in an area without others from a similar background, again, not having that familiarity, um, connecting with people that perhaps may be different, have different values, different belief systems, and are essentially um, different from people that you have connected with in other parts of your life. That can feel that sense of loneliness, as well as the ability to not and participating in social activities due to a shortage of money. So sometimes financial restrictions, financial limitations, but or other reasons why one is not engaging in any social activity and one could feel that sense of loneliness. So all this combined are what makes an individual vulnerable to loneliness. So now we're looking at the effects of chronic loneliness. So situational loneliness can endure, can be prolonged, and can develop with chronicity this overwhelming feeling over a long period of time. So if you're feeling lonely, it continues over a long period of time. It, of course, can start to affect and have significant health risks. And it all comes down as how one copes, again, with any emotion. And if one is not able to remedy or mitigate that emotion, and if, if it is one that has profound effects, we can, in a way to cope, perhaps turn to negative or maladaptive ways of coping. So often we hear about, and we see this with older adults, especially where when they've lost loved ones, um, after being in a relationship perhaps for a long period of time, uh, the death of a loved one. And as community often we see with older adults really shrinking social opportunities, perhaps being non-existent, we see that drug use and alcoholism increase as a way to cope with loneliness. Altered brain functioning. So when someone has cognitive either caused organically or perhaps through injury. So we have cognitions or altered brain function. One could be in a state of chronic loneliness. Cardiovascular disease and stroke can be affected, right? These are some of the health um, effects, of course, of loneliness. So your brain, you can think differently. Um, you can develop, again, this is stress. When we are feeling lonely, overwhelmed, when it becomes a problematic emotion, it starts to affect the heart and also increases risk for stroke. Um, when you're lonely, again, very much you're experiencing depression or perhaps anxiety. So this can affect memory and learning. You can have decreased memory in the way that information is processed, in the way information is, um, again, stored, and also it affects our learning, comprehension, the ability to absorb information. And loneliness, of course, when one is 
again, connected with depression, can really affect the way decisions are made. Um, you can have decisions that are made impulsively, you can have decisions that are procrastinated, but overall, there is a poor decision-making ability. It really affects the ability to make a decision. And as we said earlier, chronic loneliness can lead to depression and often associated with suicide as well. So these are the effects of chronic loneliness. Perhaps increased use of alcohol and drugs. It can alter your cognitive functioning in your brain, um, as well as can lead to physiological disease like cardiovascular disease, which leads to stroke and possibly heart attack um, over a long, prolonged period of time, decrease in memory, learning, poor decision-making, and of course, depression and suicide. Now, what we want to do is learn, and especially with international students who really are vulnerable to loneliness, is how do we cope with loneliness when either we experience it early on during this transitional period or later on in our academic career. So a great way to cope with loneliness, of course, is to follow a healthy routine. Following a healthy routine is really, really important. It promotes a sense of purpose and normalcy. Reducing anxiety, when one has a routine and one has some structure in their life, it reduces anxiety and also can um, benefit and allow one to regulate and deal with and cope with these feelings of loneliness. Eating well, getting enough sleep, and engaging in physical activity promotes better mental health, better well being, again, reducing the vulnerability for loneliness. And the important thing to do is when one feels lonely, is to avoid drugs and alcohol. They may help cope with negative emotions temporarily, but in the long run, you often feel worse. Long-term use and overuse of alcohol and drugs, of course, we know leads to depression and also increased loneliness. So again, one of the most important things is keeping away from comparison. And this is really a cognitive skill that one must employ. So comparing lives to others, particularly with social media posts and stories that others share with us can make us feel we are not, we are the only ones feeling lonely. Often one of the ways that increases our sense of loneliness is that we compare ourselves and we compare our lives to others. And of course, this magnifies and this can amplify these feelings of loneliness. So again, going back to focusing on the present and your life and not necessarily comparing to others. Be aware that things are not always what they seem from the outside. For example, on social media, remember that people are usually posting positive things about their lives and rarely are they posting some of the negative aspects. However, comparing is not a way to actually deal and can actually amplify and exasperate these feelings of loneliness. So what's important again is to fo focus on any of the positive attributes of life, which means that practicing gratitude, focus, focusing on the positive aspects of one's life and why you started the journey to begin with. Think about why you left the comforts of home, culture, family, friends, to embark on a new career, to have access to education, and to improve your life. So again, reinforcing and practicing gratitude reinforces the purpose and allows you, I think, to look more positively as a reminder as why one engages and leaves um, the security of home. Control your media consumption. So too much exposure to negative news feeds anxiety. And we are, and especially these days with COVID, but in general, we often see that media focuses on stories that usually can increase your anxiety. So reducing your media consumption and reducing that exposure to negative news is often can be very, very helpful. These are ways to focus on the positive to reduce those feelings and placate the feelings of loneliness. And of course, mindful relaxation is a helpful way to regulate any emotion, and that would include loneliness. So regular exercise, stretching, 
Reading is a good way to engage in the imaginative, creative world. Music, of course, we know, and listening to your favorite music can bring back you to nostalgic times. It can increase your ability um, to engage in memories. And we all often link music with memories. So where you met perhaps a girlfriend, um, family times, music often is associated with positive memories. And of course, meditation and prayer are wonderful ways to reduce and change and alter mood to one of relaxation treat and, and tranquility. Journaling really helps, and that is a way to express mood, to frame a particular emotion like loneliness in a way and look at how to cope. And also again, journaling allows you to engage in a world full of imagination. So you connect with your thoughts consciously or unconsciously, and journaling is a very therapeutic and helpful way to regulate any mood. And of course, engaging in hobbies. So looking for social opportunities through the campus and school campus, but engaging in any activity like a hobby often will change mood and will distract enough so one is not consumed by these feelings of loneliness. And of course, the most important way to mediate feelings of loneliness is to socialize and stay connected. So again, while in school, it can often feel overwhelming, but joining a class or a group based on mutual and common interests like hobbies, whether you play chess or checkers or dominoes or any other cultural groups that one may join to celebrate and have that feeling of connection. Um, and this can include not only in person, but of course there are many online groups that one can attend. So it doesn't have to be, and one of the great things about joining a virtual group or joining an online group is you can be anywhere. So the group that you can join can even be a group back home where one is connected to friends um, and family. It doesn't necessarily have to connect to the place where you're at. Volunteering is a wonderful way, again, to connect with people and, again, to feel those feelings of gratitude, feeling the positive emotions that when one gives and volunteers, you often feel. So helping others can really improve your mental health and really improve um, your emotions and really distract from feelings of loneliness. Making an effort to make small talk to people such as cashiers, receptionists, people at school. So these are small ways that one stays connected. And over time, as one settles into any particular place, a new place, usually we frequent the same stores, the same coffee shops, where we eventually become connected, even acquainted with the same people that we see. And this making this small talk, connecting with people, developing these kind of acquainted relationships can be really, really helpful to ease and regulate feelings of loneliness. Joining clubs and meeting up organizations at the school, you'll again find others that perhaps are going through the same experience you are and discussing and connecting with people who have the same shared experience can often be very healing and help to mitigate the feelings of loneliness. So staying in touch with family and friends is important. One of the great things today is that technology has really, really helped um, to stay connected with people back home. And often um, there is very little um, in financial um, expense that one has to endure. So there's through computer, we can connect through phones, we can connect, and this is wonderful. So when you have those feelings of loneliness, it's really, really important to be in touch with family, to be in touch with friends. And this, of course, can be done through WhatsApp, Skype, and any of the platforms that are available. So keeping in touch, talking is really, really important, um, especially with friends back home, as a way to cope with loneliness. And of course, now we're gonna go talking about what other resources are available. But before we do that, we wanna talk about when you feel so isolated and overwhelmed with feelings of loneliness and when you should seek help. Now, again, we talked about when loneliness is chronic, 
But when you are isolated, disconnected, and you start to feel depressed, and it really starts to affect your functioning, that is when one should consider seeking help. So especially when you're overwhelmed with isolation, regardless of where you are, who's around. So you could be in a classroom, you could be in a crowd, and if you feel isolated, separate, disengaged, um, and you feel like you're in a bubble, and you're really not even connected to your environment, even your physical environment, that's a sign that perhaps the chronic loneliness is an emotion that you're experiencing and it's starting to affect your functioning. That is an indication of when to seek help. When negative feelings of self-doubt and self-worth start to affect and, and rise into your consciousness, that is another time. So you start to not believe in yourself, you start to wonder about whether or not you can make it through a semester or whether you can actually write a test. Again, that is an appropriate time. And that's an indication to seek help. When you're feeling overwhelmed, burnt out with feelings of exhaustion, and when, when trying to engage socially, it becomes a burden versus an opportunity to enlighten and feel elevated. So continued feelings of tiredness can lead to other issues like sleep problems, a weakened immune system, a poor diet, um, and more other and other physical conditions as well as mental conditions. So these are all indications of when your feelings of loneliness overwhelm you and start affecting your mental and physical functioning, one should consider, and it's recommended that you seek help. Good resources to seek help that are available, programs like Good to Talk, and these are lines that are confidential and their support services that are provided for post-secondary students in Ontario and specifically Nova Scotia. There's the Black Youth Helpline, of course, the Nishiha Muslim Youth Helpline. So regardless, if you want specific help, related to perhaps cultural or your own sense of identity. These are wonderful ways, I think, to connect and talk to somebody that will really help to mitigate feelings of loneliness. Again, I want to thank O2O for the opportunity to discuss um, an issue that is really salient and important and an emotion that often many international students are vulnerable to and wanting to heighten and make students aware that there is help and develop a keen understanding of a universal emotion that many will feel when separated from family, friends and coming to new country. So thank you for the opportunity and now I'm going to pass it to Nawara. Thank you so much, Vince, for a thorough presentation on coping with loneliness in a new world. Let's briefly talk about the O2O program. Orientation to Ontario, L'Ontario C'est Chez Moi, is a bilingual program funded by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada and the Government of Ontario. This program has been designed to expedite and facilitate the settlement of newcomers to Ontario and help them make better informed choices. You can visit our website to have access to all of our resources, or you can contact us via email or by telephone. We have another program, which is International Student Connect. It offers settlement information and orientation to international students pursuing a post-secondary education in Ontario. The Ontario Ministry of Children's and Community and Social Services is funding the International Students Connect program to provide support uh, to international students and their families. You can visit our website to get access to all of our resources that is available and also contact us via email or by telephone. Costi Immigrant Services is a community-based multicultural agency with 18 locations in Toronto, the region of Peel and York Region. Costi provides services in more than 60 languages. Last year, over 40,000 individuals, newcomers and refugees received assistance in the greater Toronto area. Costi Immigrant Services also manages the O2O and ISC programs. Thank you once again to Vince Pietro Paolo for collaborating with us and for helping us develop these mental health webinars. Thank you to you. Uh, thank you to all of our participants for assisting the webinar and hope you all have a great day. Thank you.